Which test country has the best openers in world cricket? Conversations go around and around about the best and sometimes the worst, aka England for the last decade. And today we're going to rank all 12 nations from the elite to the ones that probably need to go in the bin. And we're doing this by rating them on individual player performance, the performance of the team home and away, and as well as the partnerships and when the wicket goes down. If this is the sort of thing you're into, rate, review, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know who you think is the best in the world. And as always, as I do these things, I never do it alone. So welcome, <laughs> Rich, to a different sort of podcast. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Rob. You stato, you lovely, lovely stato man. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to which is going in the bin. I've got a rough idea of One Nation. <laughs> one Nation, which may or may not be on screen at the moment. Um, mm. But yeah, it is, it is interesting. So I think the, the caveat to say this is based on performances from 2019 to, I think it was January the 26th, 2022, when I started pulling off the data to be able to do this. And the way it's worked out, share my screen to everyone. Oh, that's a lot of data. Sorry, everyone data watching. You. I, I think the, the reason for putting this on screen is you can see what has actually gone into this. A lot. It's, it's probably the easiest, the easiest way to say around it. Individual players of a minimum of five innings in Test Match Cricket opening the band in are right. listed in this. And they're ranked by... The average that they rank, the 50-plus scores they have, the less than 10 scores they have, polls per dismissal, strike rate, and all that comes up with an overall ranking for how they've done. Teams are then ranked, and they're ranked on home and away performances for openers, again, on averages, 50-plus scores, less than 10 scores, ball per dismissals, and all that sort of jazz. And then the actual partnerships and the fall of the wickets, again, based on the same, but this time ranked on less than 10 less than 30 and, and scores over 50, as well as the averages that have been going on into it. And the last caveat is Ireland <laughs> and Afghanistan are oh. not in this list. And the, the rationale, Rich, is not that I don't like Afghanistan or hater. Ireland. Hater. Mm. You're, you're an Ireland hater. But Ireland have only played two test matches in the last three years, which in itself is a bit of a travesty. It's almost three and a quarter years now, and Afghanistan's played four. So it's not really giving you accurate data to to rank them on in terms of actual performance because generally they don't play against yeah. great teams. It's, they play against it's the lesser ideal. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 not it's not ideal. ideal. It, it's no. not ideal. So, yeah, I'm... I'm quite excited, Rich. This is going to be well, a this is going to be a good one and a completely different sort of pod for us. Yeah, you're just excited because you've been able to get your Excel out. You've been able to show off everyone your Excel spreadsheet. You little little, <laughs> Look little at nerd my Excel skills. Nerd. <laughs> nerd. It is, there is a little bit of nerdism um, <laughs> going on. Where, whereabouts do you want to start, Rich? What what country oh, are we going with to start off the bat? I think. Let's start with West Indies. Now, England are about to take on West Indies. West Indies hosting England in the Caribbean. First test starts on the 8th of March. We're going to be looking forward to looking at that in a bit more detail, aren't we, before the first test gets underway, Rob? And yep. we're looking at a nation. Carlos Brathwaite is an opener. We're talking about openers. Kieran Powell, John Campbell. How good, I'll, I'll pick the team and then you can give me all the data, the data, the stats, the all that sort of nerd work. And then we're going to chuck them in the ranking, aren't we? Yep. We'll make that decision. So, West Indies, Rob, what have you got for me? How do they fare? Oh, well, <laughs> Rich, oh. not good. Not good. Oh. We're, we're, st we're starting down low. Carlos Brathwaite averages less than the Test match average in the last three years. And that's probably a good point of, you know, this is what average mm. looks like. Average in Test match cricket for an opener since the start of 2019 is a Test match average of 33.64, which may give England players nosebleeds. But it's also a strike rate of 47. And you generally score less than 10 every 2.77 innings. And you'll score more than 50 every 4.5 innings. So they don't sound like ultra high level. But that is what test match minimum looks like. Out of the guys that's played for West Indies in the last three years is uh, Kieran Powell, John Campbell, Carlos Brathwaite. None of them average more than 26, which is pretty poor. They... <laughs> They all get out less than 10 very often, and they don't score more than 50 very often. The average time is 4.5 innings to score more than 50. John Campbell's is every 15 innings. So you're talking three Ashes series. 
that man is going to return you a 50. And that's a good effort considering he's not English or Australian, mate. <laughs> so what you're trying to say is that West Indies, <laughs> do they need to be in the bin or are they just poor? Uh, I think they've got to go in the bin, mate. They, they've they got to go in the bin. There's 39 I think that's it. players that have hit the quota of five test match innings, opening the batting, and we're talking 27 downwards in terms of how they've performed. But they rank, out of 11 nations, they rank bottom in home performance. They rank bottom out of individual performance. And to me, they're pound for pound the worst openers in the cricket, mate. So sorry, West Indies cricket. I know you're probably going to beat us <laughs> next week and I'm going to have no leg to stand on. But based on <laughs> facts, you, West Data. Indies cricket, are officially the first one that is going in the bin. In the bin. Yeah, so West Indies, mate, just they've got to go in the bin. You, you can't turn up week in, week out, pay your seven pound subs and put in that sort of performance. Stats don't lie. Apparently, Stats don't lie. Yes, yes, they do. Spoiler. Um, look, West Indies have got a great opportunity. They're coming up against an England side soon, aren't they? Without Broad and Anderson, as we know, they've got every chance to improve from that bin uh, level. Next time we do this, probably in a couple of years, who knows? I don't know if it'll ever be done again, <laughs> but, but it's a start. So West Indies, they're in and out. Right, do you, how do you want to, should we mix this up a little bit or should we go from what we think might be the lower to the better? How do you want to do this, Rob? I want to go with England next, mate. I want to get you the wanna, monkey off my I back. I think it's fair, isn't it? I think it's it absolutely is. fair we're going with England. England, it was Burns and Sibley. It's been Burns and Sibley for a long time, but we have had a Denley. We have had a Jason Roy in this time. We've had Hasib Hamid. We've had Zach Crawley in more recent times. And he has now been joined by Alex Lees, who obviously isn't part of this because he hasn't played a game for England yet. Yeah. But we've had a lot of openers, Rob. We've not had much success. I, I think I know where they're going already, but, uh, but talk to me. Try and talk me out of the bin. <laughs> oh, right. So if I said to you, Joe Denley is the highest ranking England player in this list. <laughs> you, you'd a, probably go, well, that's a bit silly. But actually, a, he averages 31 in since the start of 2019. He only played three games open six times. Mm. But averaged 31, which ranks highest out of England players, which <laughs> there's not a lot to go on here. But it's been a very, very poor time. And it all comes back to how many runs are you scoring in Test cricket. And England haven't scored enough. They've had people at different ends of the scale. Zach Crawley, when he opens, gets bowled out every 45 balls, mate. But the test match average is 71 in terms of ball per dismissal. And then at the other end, you've got Dom Sibley, who gets out every 84 balls and ranks ridiculously high in terms of balls per dismissal for someone of his average. He ranks number 10 in this list. So we've kind of gone one end to the other. And then we've got Jason Roy thrown in, who didn't score fast and, and didn't score any runs. And you end up with a team, everyone averages below the test match average, which is not a good position to find yourselves in. We get out more often than not below the test match average as well. Um, we're just a, a very, very, I don't want to say shambolic because that's a little <laughs> harsh, but we're, we're not good, mate. We're below average on average. We're below average on Paul's bird dismissal. We're below average on less than 10 scores. And our strike rate is absolutely woeful compared to anyone else. So England are poor. I know the future might look bright. You know, Crawley mm -hmm. looks like he's got something. Alex Leeser looks like he's got something in the West Indies. Hopefully it's not COVID and it's just runs. Right? So <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the, the heart of the English in me wants to put them in poor. But this is an English team that had four, uh, 54 ducks in the last year, mate. They can't go anywhere other than the bin, can they? It, they're in the bin. It's simple as that. This is this is historical, but this is not talking about the future. Alex Lees, we're on the Alex Lees train. I've been there on a few opener trains. I'm now on the Alex Lees train, as you know. Um, <laughs> the future is much brighter, isn't it? Zach Crawley has potential, and England absolutely going to do everything they possibly can to give him opportunity, like they did with Burns and Sibley. Yeah. Um, so they're in the bin at the minute, Rob. But who knows? One day we can dream they might get into that poor tier, or even okay. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> England, OK openers. <laughs> breaking, breaking, breaking. All right, England. let's. I'm going to jump around a little bit here. I want yeah. to look at South Africa. And I want to do South Ooh. Africa and New Zealand because they're playing off against each other at the moment. One all, wasn't it? New Zealand absolutely hammered South Africa in the first test recently. And then yeah. what happened in the second test, Rob? Uh, South Africa did exactly the same. Um, 
to to New Zealand as uh, New Zealand did to South Africa, and also the Bangladesh tour was very very similar, where Kiwis got smashed and then came back and beat Bangladesh. Very bizarre. Basically, it was a draw. I think that's what we need to say. It was yeah. that that Politics. swinging from one extreme to the other of results. Then it, you probably just call it a draw. Um, well, you have to call it a draw because it was a draw. So let's have a look at South Africa first. Gritty Elgar, Dean Elgar, one of our favourite cricketers in the world, just for his grit. Aidan Markham's been there. Peter Milan. Uh, I think they're the only ones that qualify in this uh, in this exercise we're doing. Yep. Where where should we put them? Talk to me. Tell me. Whew. Well, South Africa as a team are incredibly difficult to beat at home. You know, India went 1-0 up there and it was like, yes, we've broke Centurion. And then you went and got 2-1 and bags packed out of the country, mate. You know, they're a difficult, gritty, Dean Elgar sort of team to break down. So for me, they're in the lower echelon because they're similar to England in Test Match Cricket that they beat a lot of the poor teams but lose to a lot of the good teams. And looking at this... Adrian Markram's batting at number three and still not performing in Test Match Cricket. However, he averaged 30 um, opening the batting in this three-year period. Dean Elgar averages 34, which isn't bad. You know, it's, it's above the Test Match average. His balls per dismissal is pretty good as well, which ranks him fairly high. But Peter Milan, again, is probably the worst of the three that's played for them over the last couple of years. So from a, an individual player basis... That's ranking quite low. However, if you did it over the last two years, you might find that gritty Dean Elgar's rating is a lot higher than what it is mm. over a three-year period. When you look at the partnerships, <clears throat> and I, I think this is the, the crux of it, their opening partnership in this period is 24. The average is 31 for the first wicket going down. The below getting out less than 10. Um, they get out less than 10. 41% of the time they bat, they are one wicket down for less than 10 and 71% of the time it's less than 30 May. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's still in the poor. If they had another Dean Elgar to go with a Dean Elgar, Andrew Hudson thrown into there or a Gary Kirsten rolling back the years, Oof. I'd put them higher. But South Africa, for me, they're probably around that poor stage being held up by one good opener. What do you think? Ooh, I, I, I'm, I'm t it's a tough one. I, I, I was thinking okay. I was thinking okay, but they haven't really performed, have they? They are in the bottom grouping uh, of this one, probably rank about oh, eight. Maybe you're overall. right. Maybe I'm, I think maybe okay. I'm being a bit too harsh. Overall, with that okay. Afghanistan and Ireland in it, the ranking sixth overall. So yeah, they I probably okay. are pushing. They've got one good opener, mate. That's better than most. Exactly, exactly. And they're, they're not bothered. Aidan Markram is currently batting at number three, isn't he? They have bumped him down. There's no uh, there's no Peter Milan at the moment. Saril Irwi, the 32-year-old, uh, on his on made his debut in the first test against New Zealand. He got himself his first hundred for, uh, for yeah. South Africa, hundred and eight um, in this last test that they've just played. So there's a bit of future there. I mean, they're going with a 32 year old youngster. Yeah. Um, so who knows? Who knows? They're on the up. Let's give them a bit of optimism. So New okay. Zealand, that's who. Okay, who there we go. Oh, <laughs> not, whoa, whoa, whoa! They're not that good. Sarah Lewy, jeez, come on, <laughs> two test matches, one hundred. <laughs> right, Kiwis, Devon Conway, Devon, Devon Conway. Uh, along with Tommy Latham and Will Young, everyone's favourite. Oh my God, what was it? X Factor or the other thing? It was X, won? X, X Factor. Factor. I think he was the original winner. Ever the original X Factor. So Will Young, Tommy Latham, who is a bit of a born again, and Devon Conway in this section. Rob, let's not be any. Let's not show any of your bias. You've been there long enough now. You don't have to creep and crawl around these Kiwis. Talk to me. Tell me where they are. I definitely don't. Opening has been an issue for the Black Caps for a long time, Rich. Particularly since I've been in the country, there was always an issue around who's going to open. And they've been through the ring of the last few years. Jeetan Raval was there. Before then, you had Martin Guptill going, can Martin Guptill play test cricket? That was the question on everyone's lips. And the answer was no, because he plonks his front foot forward in his LBW or nicked off every single time. Maybe mm. he should try batting on full stump like Ollie Pope. I don't know. It might have worked for him in the future. But over the last few years, they have chopped and changed. Devin Conway came in, mate and ranks number one overall in this individual ranking list out of any opener in the last three years, slightly skewed. He only opened six times, and he's dropped down to number three in the lineup, and that's where they're going to be using him going forward. Tom Latham ranks really high at number eight. Tom Blundell, who famously scored 100 at Wellington in his home city and went back on the bus after a load of beer and his whites after a game, after scoring 100 in the test. That's class. Will Young currently opening at the moment is at a tough time, averaging 27, but he's played in India. And Jeet Raval played a load of cricket and really wasn't quite mm. good enough. So overall on the player side, 
they actually rank quite high because of Conway, because of Latham, and mm. Blundell did go and score a century on Australia. As a team, they averaged 37 opening the batting, which is above the current average by about four balls per dismissal. They're about 10 balls over, so that's really good. They do get out about, on average, less than 10. So it's they're an interesting team. They're a high-performing team a lot of the time and quite often exceed expectations of, of what you think they're going to do. But I think overall, Rich, you look at the partnerships and they rank second out of this list. They average 39 for the first wicket. They're just... They're a good team. It doesn't seem to good. matter who comes in, mate. Yeah. I, I, I want to put them. No, in whoa, whoa, like whoa, whoa, whoa. And the New Zealand thing. But whoa, I whoa, want whoa. To put them in elite. What do you think? Whoa, no, 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 no. I think you've got to earn elite. I don't, I don't think they're quite there. I think good. I think they've got to be in good. Got to be in. I good. don't think they're quite elite. I think. I think there's a there's, there's definitely one or two teams that would have a, an argument because this is the thing. Elite has to be elite. It there does. can't be three or four teams in elite because then it's not elite. Yeah. yeah. You know what? If they were still opening with Devon Conway and it was Devon mm. Conway and Tom Latham, I think they're elite. But, Going um, forward, yes. But they don't. But for this, they don't. Yeah. I think, I think that they are where they need to be at the moment. Um, okay. Let's have a look who is next. So did we say we're not including Afghanistan? Afghanistan's out. Ireland's out purely on the basis that yeah, they've just not, not enough played enough games. Okay, so Afghanistan have been taking on Bangladesh at the minute. So let's have a look at Bangladesh, Rob. Tammy Mikbal, Shadman Islam, what do we got? Oh, um, quite often with Bangladesh, they're not great. And that's not being horrible to them. It's Breaking just they've news. constantly yeah. underperformed because you've seen people with talent. You've seen Tammy Mikbal come in scoring. Shaki Bal Hassan is a... Uh, he's a, almost a generational player in terms of his visibility to be as good with the bat, with as with the ball in multi formats. So, huge amount of respect to them. But Tammy Inkbell ranks massively, massively high on this list, mate. Number four overall, seven hundred and thirty nine runs at an average of fifty two in the three year period, which is absolutely exceptional. He ranks number one in strike rate for openers during that period. Number two in the amount of innings that he needs to get a 50-plus score, which is incredible, every 2.14 innings. So every other test match, um, almost once a test match, he's going and scoring that amount of runs. And also, for for an aggressive player, it's every 3.5 innings that he scores less than 10, which is almost one extra innings on the on the test match average. Unfortunately, he's not been backed up by much. Shadman uh, Islam ranks really low at 33rd. There's only 39 people on this list, and Saif Hassan is 35th on the list. They average 22 and 14, respectively. So that does mean their average opening partnership is 26, mate, which is below average. Ranks number eight overall when you put in averages over uh, partnerships over 50 and Mm -hmm. scores below 30 and below 10. So it doesn't leave a good taste in my mouth. Um, Incredibly, actually, they've been really poor um, scoring runs at home, Mm. opening the batting. So to me, out of this list, I've got them as the third worst opening uh, unit going yeah. around. There's two gaps at the moment. We don't have an elite. We don't have a poor. I think we've got to fill one of those gaps, and it's certainly not elite. I think they've got to go in poor. They're not as they're not in the bin with England and West Indies. But I think because of Shab, uh, Tommy McBell, they stay just above that, but they don't have anyone with him. So definitely in the poor. Right, let's rattle through a couple more, Rob. Let's have a look. Australia are going to Pakistan, aren't they? They're about to play some test matches. Tomorrow, the first test match in Pakistan at, at uh, Ralph Pindi. Three test match series coming up for Australia, Pakistan. Let's start with the host, Pakistan, Abid Ali, Shan Masood, Imran Butt. Give me the brief, give me the, the, the skinny on these guys, and then we'll rattle into Australia. Uh, Pakistan, pretty good, mate. <laughs> I think oh, pretty, pretty good. good. I've got them averaging uh, ranking fifth at home and fourth away in terms of opening performance. Partnership kind of middle of the road. Individual, they let themselves down a little bit. And I think that's because that sometimes they've tried a few openers. There's four openers on this list. Abid Ali and Shah Massoud look like legitimate openers in test cricket, mate. One average is 49, Abid Ali during this period. And Shah Massoud averages 34, which, okay, we might go, oh, 34 is not great. It's above average in test match cricket. If you've got one or the other, that's really good. Unfortunately, 
Iman Bhutt and Iman Ul Haq played a hell of a lot of cricket during this three year period, opening the batting, which brings down that overall individual average for the team. I I like them. I I like Pakistan anyway, but yeah. I like them. They score fifty plus partnerships at the third highest rank going around. Their average is pretty high. I where am I where am I gonna lobby for? I think you, they're better than South Africa opening the batting. Yeah. Because I feel like they've got two oh, genuine okay. openings in Abid Ali and Sean Massoud. Sean Massoud of Leicestershire fame coming up to the county championship season. I don't know whether I want to leave them in okay and maybe yep. push them up to good, seeing where other people lie. No, I think they are where they need to be. I think they're absolutely where they need to be. I think they're an okay opening side. I don't think there's any disrespect to be an okay opening side. And if we're having a tier ranking as well, you're absolutely right to put them above South Africa. So I think that's absolutely spot on, mate. I've got no problem with that. Uh, Australia, who, who's uh, visiting Pakistan. We've got, was it Davy Warner? Davy Warner. We had uh, Burns. Burns, openers called Burns. Just they're not not a long term success, all right. As simple as that. Joe Burns, uh, Marcus Harris is in there at the moment as well, isn't he? Um, Will Pukowski would have been opening. I just want to quickly yeah. name check in. Will Pukowski has had one of the roughest times in the world, hasn't he? Rob with your yellow glasses, you know all about concussion issues. Right. Just in case anyone's wondering why Rob's wearing yellow glasses, it's not a fashion choice. Thank God for that. Uh, <laughs> so. But uh, but yeah, Australia. I, I think they're I think they're 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 pretty much with uh, the tier we've just spoke about. I think they're on a par with uh, with Pakistan and South Africa. Or does David Warner bump them into the good level? You know, you know what? I, Joe Burns is a strange one because he averaged thirty seven and got dropped. Which oh, is... do you know what? I feel bad now. I feel bad now. I'm criticizing um, him. That's that's good. But that's only during this period. David Warner averages mm. forty three during this period, a highest of three hundred and thirty five, and that massive. Um, big celebration. Marcus Harris averages 23. And what Marcus Ooh. Harris is 23, considering he played the last series against England, really pulls down their individual ratings, mm. their, their team performance and partnerships. They do, as a team, average 36 at home, which is above the, the test match average of 33. But they haven't played a lot of away cricket, Rich, during the last three years. In fact, I'm going to say they've played one test match um, during that time, and they averaged 19. So they kind of skewed mm. a little bit. For me, they've got David Warner, who's still a highly elite opener in Test match cricket. Mm. He's not quite as fluent as he used to be, but can still grind out runs like he did in the Ashes. Real big, important player for them. But I feel like they've got one opener, which yeah, I, yeah. leaves them around the same level as South Africa for me. Yeah, well, Warner versus Gritty. Simple as that, isn't it? Um, yeah. Gritty, Dean Elgar. I think I think they are where they need to be. I think you could argue that they go in between Pakistan and South Africa in that OK ranking, but I think they're absolutely where they need to be. Yeah. Rob. So, I'm, I'm again, leaving South Af uh, Pakistan there because they are the better of those three teams for me. Brilliant. Full agreement from me. OK, um, three teams left, Rob. Sri Lanka, India and Zimbabwe. I'm going to go for India next. I'm going to drop India in there. Or, yeah, let's go India. Come on. Rohit Sharma, uh, Agawal, Kale Rahul, Shrubman Gill have been in there as well during this time. India, everything they do in world cricket and test cricket is, I would say, it's good to elite. So can we continue that trend? Uh, yes, they, they are very much good to elite, mate. Um, in terms of performance at home, they rank third. Performance away, they rank second, which is... Absolutely mm, exceptional. Not Interesting first. Mm. Yeah, no, New Zealand ranked first in terms of mm. open performance away from home. Partnership third. Um, they, they're a, look, they're, they're an exceptional team. I think the thing that they've got going on is they've got too many openers to pick from. There's Sharma, who is the second best opener on this list, but Conway, if you take him out for only playing six innings, Sharma's head and shoulders above anyone else. But also, if you do this task going back to the year 2000, Sharma ranks number one ahead of Gary Kirsten as being the best opener um, of the last 22 years. That's how good his performance has been. Averaging 58 is an absolute Useful. monstrosity of a performance. 25 runs above the average. Agawal averages 43. Shubman Gill, K.O. Rahul, 31, 34, and P.P. Shaw average of 17. That's what kind of brings them down a little bit on the individual performance. But they do... They just score runs. 42 average at home when the, the test match average is 33 for that period. 
and Walder away the average 32 when people average 27 away so they're a, a, a highly highly skilled unit mate um where um, where are they gonna go I for me feel they are elite yeah I think I was just about to ask the question where are they in comparison to New Zealand and I think they're a definite step above New Zealand so they have yeah. to congratulations India you'll be so proud you're yeah. in the elite put Kiwis back in good stop messing about yeah <laughs> so, I, I, I agree. I think they are elite. The depth <laughs> makes them elite as well. The fact that Kale Rahul can come in and do so well in English conditions uh, is, is is a great feat to do. Sharma scores runs all around the world, and Agarwal's yep. been in and out of the squad Absolutely. with the injuries and stuff like that. But when he's available, there's there's not many better. Absolutely. So right, quickly, last two Zimbabwe. We don't need to dwell on these ones at all. Masavare and Kasuza uh, are the, uh, the the notable openers in this one. Where are we putting them, Rob? I think before you do this, without looking at the stats, you'd probably put them quite low. But I think they're, I think they're pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've actually. You probably it comes down to who you've been playing, and they've not played a lot of good teams. True, which true. isn't weighted in this um, statistical model. So it's not weighted for it's just weighted for home and away, irrelevant of opposition. I've actually got them performing really high at number fifth, but they should be impacted by the fact that they've only played lesser opposition during that time. Yes. Um, I would <laughs> I would actually rank them above England and West Indies. And I know you can make the call that England and West Indies, well, they've gone and played Australia, they've played India, they've played New Zealand. Well, <laughs> they're in the bottom two for a reason, that they have been absolutely woeful. Yeah. This Zimbabwean team averages more than that. The average 31 away from home, which is no mean feat to, to be able to go and achieve, to be fair. there's not Sorry, that's not them. Zimbabwe averaged 19 away from home, which Ooh. is pretty woeful, but <laughs> yeah. but still ranks above England, Australia <laughs> and Ireland in terms of their overall Ooh. performance. And at home, they average 25. So the, the poor, in fact, no, you know what? They're in. The, I want to put them in the bin, mate. I've talked myself Whoa. into a bin. Oh, my word. I'm not going to argue with that one because it's about competition, isn't it? And I think you could yeah. easily have put them in, in the poor. Uh, but you could even, looking at the stats, you could actually argue, oh, OK, but because of the opposition, you could put them in poor. I think you've been a bit harsh in the bin. But I've got no problem. I don't know enough about Zimbabwe cricket and their openers to argue. So I'm happy with that. One last team, Rob, Sri Lanka. Can they join one of the top two tiers? That's what I want to know. Karuna Atne, one of the finest openers in the world. Tiramani are the two main openers we've seen. I like Sri Lanka. I like the openers. I think this is one part of their test setup that is doing very, very well. Yeah. Where will they go? Well, I'll start with the partnerships. So hmm. since 2019, they have an average opening partnership of 47 in test match cricket. Hmm. The average opening partnership is 31 during that time. They've got 700 partnerships, three 50 partnerships. And let me put this in context. They score less than 10, 19% of the time. The average mm-hmm. is 34. They score more than 50, 27% of the time. The average is 20. They score more than 100 partnership opening 19% of the time, as much as they score less than 10. And the average is seven. In terms of partnerships, they're, they're the best going around. Performance at home, the average 41. You take them away, yeah, it drops down, but the average 32 as opposed to an average of 27 away from home. So it's very on par with where India are. But when you look at the individual batsmen, this is kind of what shines for me. Karuna Ratna is one of the finest openers in, in test match cricket. 1,539 runs made, a double century thrown into the mixer, five centuries, 600s. An average of 48, which isn't on Rohit Sharma's level, but is absolutely outstanding. That's 14 above the average. He gets out, he lasts 21 more balls than the average person in Test Match Cricket opening the batting. Uh, he's he's world-class and ranks number fifth on, the list, on this list for me of individual players. But Tiramani averages 37 during this time, which is absolutely superb. Puts him over. He's played 12 test matches, 23 and in. So that's a pretty good yeah. range to kind of work out what's going on. He bats a lot slower, slower than the the kind of the international average of strike rate. And then there's Fernando, who batted in 2019-20, who averaged 43. So oh, overall, come on. I think they're Call absolutely it. fantastic. I've called them 
Second Call best it. at home, third best away, first best in terms of overall partnerships, second best in terms of ind- individual players, first if you take Afghanistan out of it, and overall number one on this list, cool. Sri Lanka, top Elite. of the pops. Elite. Yes, absolutely. I can't couldn't, couldn't agree more. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a surprise, isn't it? I think when people are looking at this, if you've stayed with us this long, talking about stats and data and all this sort of other gubbins, I think you'd be surprised to see Sri Lanka there, but they absolutely deserve to be there. And I like the fact that you've just bumped them ahead of India in that elite tier. I have Indian I th- fans, tell us yeah. what we've done wrong. Yeah, I I just <laughs> I just think they're the they're the best at, at the moment and, and fair play to them because they're it's been a rough time for Sri Lanka cricket for quite a few years now. They've struggled to replace world-class players, Jai Wardner, Sangakara, Jai Sarir, if you want to go back that far, and Rangatunga, if you want to go back that far. So <laughs> um, more power to them. Rich, is there any arguments you would have on that, other than maybe India bumping Sri Lanka off one? I don't think so at the moment. I think we, this is a different conversation if we're starting to look going forward. Um, I think where people are Pakistan. at the moment... You could, you could, you could fiddle, but I don't think we need I feel, to. I, think... I feel they're on a different level to oh. Australia and South Africa. That's my only point. Like, look, I, you could look, go two, means two, that... two, and yeah. be pretty happy. And If it means you stop trying to fiddle with the New Zealand logo and just leave it in good, <laughs> then I'm happy to block it in with that Pakistan uh, cricket logo as well. So I'm fine with that. So we've got India and Sri Lanka as the elite. New yep. Zealand, Pakistan is good. South Africa, Australia, in whatever order you want is okay. Meh. I prefer them there. Um, Bangladesh are poor. In the bin goes Zimbabwe, West Indies, England. I think that's right. I think that's fair. I don't think anyone can dispute that whatsoever, but I encourage people to dispute it and tell us absolutely how we've done this wrong. Yeah, please let us know in the comments. It's guys, all Rob's what fault. You guys think about it. it is my fault. It's based on my statistical model, which again doesn't take <laughs> exactly. into account the quality of bowling attack. Um, or where yes. they were playing in the world. It's just international home and away averages and, and things Stats. like that. So a little bit of a different video. Let us know what you guys think and if there's any of these teams that you would move around on here. But I think that's a, a pretty reasonable representation of how good this West Indies England series is going to be, mate. It's going to be high quality. <laughs> hey, it's the start of something new, Rob. We've turned the page, a new chapter. It's a new book. Forget a new chapter. We've thrown the old book away. It's a new book. It's Here we go. Book. Come on. Happy days, mate. Well, thank you so much for swinging by, guys. I hope you've really enjoyed it as much as one I've enjoyed putting it together, but two, doing the, doing the pod with Rich on this is actually really good fun. So, um, yeah. yeah, like we said, rate, review, subscribe wherever you're listening. Let us know if there's something else like this that you would like to see, and uh, we can always mm. take a look at it in the future. So, have a great week. We're looking forward to a lot of cricket. India, Pakistan, England, West Indies. It's all going down. We'll catch you guys next time.